Hey everybody, this is Perch. Uh, got off the phone with a friend from Disney who works in the Disney Press Department. So this is not Disney, or this is not Marvel Disney, but this is Disney Press that makes uh, Disney books, licensing, licenses things off to other companies. Uh, basically, if you've gone to a Target or a Walmart, you've seen like the Disney Princess comics or the uh, you know some of the, the storybooks, the five-minute stories, that kind of stuff. Most of those fall under either Disney Press directly or as a licensed product that Disney Press tends to manage and go other places. And there, there's generally, and I forget now who I talked to, but one of the interviews that we did, I mean, this was on the air, um, they talked about doing a, uh, you know, a story with Disney. It may have been Pat Shand, actually, come to think of it. Uh, but they had done some story, a Marvel story, under Disney Press. And there's like rules like Wolverine can't smoke and... You know, kind of various random rules that, that are kind of silly, but they fit within Disney. Anyway, have a friend there. And uh, today was a day of activity within old Disney press. A number of things are happening. But one of the things that was happening was the uh, a, a meeting, a mandatory meeting, around standards of business conduct as it relates to their social media policy. So this is, by the way, not necessarily insider news. Um, you can go online and you can see some, you know, some news activity about this. You know, certainly if you just search under Disney social media rules, you will see another file. You know, this is Google. So I'm, I'm, people are like, oh, where's the receipts? Here are the receipts. Go to Google, type Disney social media rules, and something will come right up almost immediately. And it will, uh, you know, you'll see some older rules, a lot of files from 2018, but then you'll see that some of them have been recently updated as in the last month. Then if you decide to scroll over using the same search term over to news, you'll, um, you'll get a bunch of stories kind of around kind of guest behavior and other things. But you gotta, you've got to uh, kind of dig a little bit more. And uh, you'll get into kind of some analysis around some of the social media laws. Do they hold up? How do they relate to some of the recent goings on? And, uh, and, and what you'll see is that the legal or analysis that's being done is that these social media rules are enforceable, that if they went to court, the belief is that the company would win uh, if the employee uh, charged the company. And here's the interesting bit. And again, you have to dig a little bit, but you can find it. Um, the, the comment that if independent contractors or freelancers went to court, that if they are being held to, uh, that, that basically if they're being paid by the parent company, that the social media rules would apply. And they actually are, you know, there's been this longstanding belief that if you're an IC or you're a freelancer, you know, the company really can't maintain, um, you know, they, they really can't maintain a social media policy. They can't force it on you. Um, but basically, this analysis is saying, oh, no, they can't. So what is the implication of all this? Well, I think it's going to take a while to really settle out, but there's a little prediction on my part. We're currently going through the uh, aftermath of the, uh, the throwing out Roe versus Wade from the Supreme Court. And however you feel about that, whether you're pro or con, or my favorite position is kind of the really nuanced position of you are pro-choice, but you don't like that the Supreme Court was involved. So you, you kind of you want those rules, but you don't want them coming from the Supreme Court. That's my <laughs> that's the that why I love that is just watching people attempt to explain that to an angry person. <laughs> who's on one side or the other. Such fun. Um, anyway, with this uh, entire thing going on, with the increased polarization and with the run-up to the election, everything that Disney has gotten themselves into as it relates to Florida and kind of the battle with Ron DeSantis and the, uh, you know, the, the lack of better word, I, the either don't say gay or grooming law. See, that, that offends both groups when I say about it. So why? Because don't say gay isn't actually in the law, but that's what people were calling it who were against it. And uh, the other side was calling it the groomer law, which the other side didn't like anyway. But regardless, uh, these school laws. Uh, my belief is that you are going to see some bad behavior, and you kind of see some of this in some of the news stories that you can click on in this whole thing. But from the conversation with my friend, what was highlighted to the employees there is that every department of the company, every department, from cast to Imagineering to WD Pro to groups like ESPN, ABC, and Marvel are going to need to live under these rules. And the biggest reason is it's, it's now providing too much fodder for lawsuits. 
And it, it basically, it's too much of a gotcha. If, if you're, for example, I'll give you this scenario, because this scenario that she gave me, that they said in the room, which like, let's say that you're a cast member working in the park. And let's say a you know guest is in the park, gets drunk, and start shouting and maybe taking uh, you know trash and throwing it on the ground. Let's say they start you know causing a bit of a ruckus. And let's say that Disney decides to throw that guest out, which they are perfectly you know allowed to do by law. You're, you're making a scene, and we're going to throw you out of the park. Well, let's say that in the midst of being thrown out of the park, the guest gets the name of one of the people who's throwing them out of the park turns it over, decides to make a lawsuit out of it, turns it over to their lawyer, the lawyer looks up the name, the lawyer discovers that there's tweets talking about how uh, Trump voters are monsters. I don't know, whatever. Now suddenly the lawsuit changes to, you know, it, say, you know, you're basically attacking by political beliefs, there's somebody, it makes the entire thing very complicated. Now for what it's worth, in those cases, the company still usually wins. You have to prove that there was malice, and it's just it makes it very, very difficult to win. It's a couple very you know big cases, but generally they win. However, and this is what you will not hear on some of the legal channels and other things that, that are on YouTube, whether you win or you lose for a big company, it's better not to do it at all. The optics of it, the uh, the news cycle that gets out, the distraction, all that other if you can avoid it, you should. And you should take great pains to avoid it, even if you believe you're going to win. Even if 90% of the time you're going to win, that 10% becomes a pain in the ass. And you avoid it whenever possible. So what's one easy way to avoid it? Well, one easy way to avoid it is you put a social media policy in place, which in fairness Disney had. You hold to it, meaning you actually discipline and or terminate employees that go against it. And apparently freelancers and contractors and, and ICs as well. And then, if such a scenario exists, you as Disney can say, hey, um, you know, this person was in violation of social media policy, we're firing them, and it, it, then it, it just it takes that 90% win rate and takes it up to 98% win rate. Because then it's, the company is basically able to prove that, hey, this person went rogue, they didn't do the right thing. Now, granted, they're still employment of the company, but the argument that the company gets to make is we make best efforts to avoid these kinds of situations, and when they are brought to our attention, we remedy them. So anyway, th all, all this said, I get the question a lot of will, you know, Marvel, will Disney ever enforce a social media policy? Basically, will we ever see a day where the employees of Marvel are not allowed to tweet, you know, various kind of angry, you know, rants um, and things that are political, all the rest? And the answer is, yeah, I think we're veering closer and closer to that point. There's been moments before where there's been, you know, reminders of social media. And if you have been paying attention, and I said this about a year ago, and I had a bunch of uh, people like, ah, Fritz doesn't know what he's talking about. He's, he doesn't know the business. But it turned out to be true. The, uh, if you notice, a lot of the editors now, you know, that does not, of course, count people at DC who, uh, you know, I mean, the, you know, <laughs> Chris Conroy show continues to be absolutely hysterical. I mean, by hysterical, I mean painfully bad. Like, here's the recent tweet. If I tweeted my thoughts about January 6th hearings, you would all scream at me because you're still all invested in the notion that we can ultimately win this fight. Whoops, up here, I've just tweeted my thoughts about the January 6th hearings. Here's my favorite part. Nobody is coming to save us. In the next five years, your options are fighting by which I do mean fighting, not the way our politicians mean fighting, which mostly means tweeting or voting, or getting out. Both can be the right call, but those are the options. This is the uh, senior editor of uh, Black Label, at, uh, group editor at uh, DC, uh, basically encouraging uh, people to go out there and, and punch other people. <laughs> like, I, you're going to have to really go out and fight. And I mean really fight. It's like... Uh, I'm in the hole, and let me just dig it a couple more feet. Anyway, regardless, at Marvel, there was a message that went out to the full-time employees saying, hey, cut this shit out. And uh, at least by where Disney appears to be going, because this is Disney Press now, not Marvel, but Disney Press basically gave the word that, hey, for our freelancers, for our independent contractors, for even the authors that we're contracting to do books that aren't, you know, have no relationship other than it's a work for hire, they write something, we publish it. Um, we're, uh, 
they need to live by our social media policy as well. If true, if this is what sticks, it's a pretty major move, and I, I think there's a high likelihood it will stick. Again, because we're about to enter the midterm insanity where everybody's going to go on social media and it's going to turn into an absolute trash fire, and people are going to say a lot of things in the heat of the moment that they don't necessarily mean, but it's going to uh, it's going to get it's going to get, just get bowled over is what's what's happening. So, an interesting time indeed. By the way, the Disney social media policy basically goes that uh, Disney, uh, you know, they cannot post anything about their job or relating to their job or that links them to their job in any form. They can't even, they, as Disney cast members, you can't reveal what characters are playing, can't take pictures backstage, can't talk about how the day went, can't talk about if it was a hard day or a bad day or a good day or whatever it happens to be. They just have to uh, basically post benign things or things that are completely and absolutely disconnected to their work, which is you know pretty hard to do since that's a big part of your life. That's the that's the, the lay of the land. So social media, that's where things are going. We'll see where it nets out. Um, I'll you know we'll we'll see how things behave and respond. But I guess I'll leave with this. Regardless of how it all goes, if you are a creator, meaning an artist, a writer, inker, letter, colorist, whatever it happens to be, and you work for Marvel, and you would like to continue to work for Marvel, um, I think it would be uh, you, your best option is to sanitize your social media feed, cut that shit out, even if you think it's kind of funny, and, uh, and, and basically take, take the um, possibility that one day you're going to be canned off of a project or a book because you decided to get drunk and post about how you know, Trump looks like a Cheeto uh, or whatever. Like it, it's now is the time to cut bait and, and basically uh, you know, get, get out of that. Smartest thing you could do. Anyway, uh, there you go. So a little bit of news to pass along, a little bit of somewhat insider information, always kind of fun. Uh, hey, do you have any questions, thoughts, concerns? What do you think this will do? Do you think it will do anything? Let me know in the comments below. Like and subscribe, of course, and thanks for listening.